He's not anybody else's God. He's only the God of Sister Patty and her family and her people. Because God ain't the God of everybody. He's only the God of the Israelites. So now when you read these things, they're more personal. It's not a religion that we're talking about where anybody that come in the door, they can join, they can fill out a form. No, it ain't like that. If you don't descend from the people on this side, you're not a part of God's children. You're not a part of God's people. Read on. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not, excuse me, thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Bible says thou shalt have no other gods before me. So that means what God told you to do, you must follow. And you can't follow what another God told you to do. I'm going to give you an example of breaking that law that you may not be familiar with. God never told you to celebrate Christmas. Bring it out. God never told you to celebrate a birthday. Right. God never told you to celebrate Thanksgiving, New Year's on January 1st, right. July 4th in the middle of the summer, right. Memorial Day or Labor Day. Gee. Now, I used to celebrate all those days because that's how I was raised here. I was raised to break God's commandments. Right. Have you broken any of those? Have you celebrated any of those days? Well, that means that you have been in the midst of idolatry, my sister. The very first of the Ten Commandments, you've been raised to break from the time that you came from your mother's womb. But in order to bring the kingdom of heaven out of you, you must learn to no longer break that commandment. Because God gave you days that he wants you to celebrate. So you must start celebrating those days along with your children and stop celebrating the days that this man taught you. The same one that made you question whether he was really real taught you a whole bunch of stuff that God doesn't want you to follow. So we must forsake all the things that he taught us and come back to our father, our God. Read on. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You ever seen somebody wear a necklace with like a cross on it? You know what that cross represents? It represents idolatry. It represents the oppression of our Lord and Savior. Now, let's say I was your brother. Say I was your little brother, right? And I got murdered. I got murdered in the streets, uptown Newport News. Somebody shot me in my head. Would you walk around with a gun on your neck? No, you might wear one on your hip in case somebody try to run up on you, but you're not going to wear one on your neck. That's a symbol of what somebody did to kill your own brother. But we walk around with a cross that's really glorifying the people that put our Lord and Savior to death. This man, the Roman Empire, these people, at the hands of some of his own people, they came together to kill our Messiah. So we can't have those graven images anymore. We got to put those things away. Read on. Or any likeness of anything uh -huh. that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, Read on. or that is in the waters under the earth. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, uh -huh. nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So we can't serve any of these idols. And when we wear a cross on our neck and go to church on Sunday, we're serving that idol. Because that idol gets worshipped every Sunday. God doesn't get worshipped on Sunday. It's the reason they call it Sunday, because they worshipped the sun. Not the S-O-N, the S-U-N. It was Sunday. Read on. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The name of the Lord thy God is this Bible right here. Vanity is lies. So we can't take any, we can't take this book and make any lies about it. But when we take this image right here, we took the Lord's name in vain. Because you can't find this image anywhere in the Bible. But if I tell you that Jesus Christ or the people of the Bible look like that, I've now taken the Lord's name in vain. You see that, my sister? So these are things that we got to repent from. That we didn't even have a clue that we were breaking the Ten Commandments. We haven't even been keeping the Ten Commandments. Read on. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, what day do they tell us to celebrate, to worship? Sunday. But God says, not Sunday, 
the Sabbath day. Did you ever study Spanish, my sister? Long time ago. Sunday was Domingo. I remember that. Do you remember what Saturday was in Spanish? Sabado. Look at that. Look at God, my sister. You see how plain he made that? So what day is the Sabbath? Saturday. So the day that God wants you to come together and fellowship and congregate with other Israelites from the 12 tribes, is it Sunday or is it Saturday? It's Saturday. So the way that we bring the kingdom of heaven out of you is to help you don't go to church anymore. That's right. Don't celebrate a birthday anymore. That's right. That one struck a chord, Teach. right? Teach, right? Y'all. Don't celebrate Christmas anymore. What? No more cookouts on July 4th anymore. That's right. Okay. So look, if you don't do those things now, the, a part of repentance, repentance means to change your ways, to turn from one thing. But if I'm turning from something, what am I turning to? It's got to be something else. So right now, you're in, the, you're in the midst of your turn. But you got to land on the other side. You don't want to get stuck in the middle. You don't want to get lost in the sauce. Many times our people will say, nah, I ain't doing that no more. But they don't make it back to the Bible to apply what God says that you must celebrate. All right, give me Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 real quick. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which is, which is what you are. So-called black woman, tribe of Judah. That's right. The father of your children, so-called black man, your children are from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Read on. And say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. You see that? God gave us feasts that are holy convocations. A convocation is a day that we come together. And that's going to begin with what? Even these are my feasts. Uh-huh. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. So the seventh day is a holy convocation. So remember we read in the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In order for you to keep it holy, you have to have a convocation. That means you got to come to the school with us, with other brothers and sisters and children and men and women and children and keep God's commandments together. All right? Now, if you continue reading in that chapter, you're going to find all of God's holidays. All right? So you'll realize that you're not missing out on anything by stop celebrating your birthday. Right. You've actually been missing out on the wonderful feast days of God your entire life. Right. And once you, once you complete that turn in your repentance, you're going to realize that you're not missing out on anything at all, my sister. Right. You're going to wish that you had learned this sooner. Right. When you start keeping the new moon every month, when you start keeping the Sabbath every week, when you and your family travel to the Passover every year, when we go camp out for a whole week for Feast of Tabernacles, it's going to be something your family never experienced, but they're going to love it. We all got children out here, and our children love keeping God's commandments. My son don't even think about a birthday. He want to come to the school every day. Daddy, when we going back to the most high school? Daddy, can I come with you to the most high school? Where are we going for tabernacles this year, Daddy? Where are we going for Passover this year, Daddy? They ain't never asking me about Christmas. They ain't never asking me about Thanksgiving. They ain't never asking me about New Year's. Because my children got enough sense to know if everything is dead outside on January 1st, how can the year be new? No brainer, right? No brainer. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.